So with Blender open, we want to start with the emitter. Add a cube with a subsurf and a cast modifier with a value of 1. Apply both of them and delete the bottom half of the mesh. Proceed by adding a particle system and set the start and end frame to 1. Then add normal, random, and z-velocity, as well as some damp. Change the lifetime to something between 10 and 20 frames and increase the randomness a little. Once you're happy, bake the simulation. Go into the physics tab and add fluid physics. Do the same for a cube that is larger than the particle simulation. Set the domain to domain and the emitter to flow. In the flow object, set the flow type to fire and smoke and change the sampling substeps to 2. Make sure that the emitter is set to inflow so that it keeps generating smoke as long as the particles are alive. Change the flow source to the particle system and select the particle system you just made. Animate the size of the particles to be large at the beginning and smaller towards the end. Set the initial velocity to something around 50%. In the domain, increase the resolution a bit and decrease the time scale, as Manta flow is often too fast. Enable adaptive domain and decrease the threshold. By changing the heat and buoyancy, you choose how fast the smoke rises. Make sure to enable dissolve with slow checked. If you want a large scale explosion, add a turbulence force field and play with the settings. Now do a test bake. Change a few settings and rebake. Once you're happy with the simulation, rebake it one last time. Before it's time for materials, make sure the emitter is disabled in the render. Now select the domain and add a material. Replace the principal BSDF with the principled volume. Increase the density and black body intensity. Then tweak the temperature. The lower it is, the redder the fire. You can either render out the explosion as an animation, or you can 3D track a clip in a new blend file and append the explosion to get realistic depth. See ya.